Eric Darling here with Darling Data. Still, uh, feels like a perpetual situation. I'm not sure, I'm not sure that this can ever be resolved. At least not peaceably. Anyway, <clears throat> today's video, we're going to talk about hash join spills. Because, oh, I don't know, those, those seem pretty important. Because, uh, much like hash aggregate spills, if these really start piling up, they can ruin your day. Not in a good way. Not like uh, if your car breaks down in front of a bar and you're like, I'll just go inside and call AAA from the payphone. And you end up having a great day inside the bar because you're like, well, I don't have any quarters. And the bartender points to a sign that's like, no change for the payphone. And so you have to buy a beer that costs 75 cents to get a quarter to call the, to call the tow truck company. Then you just decide to hang around for a while. That's my kind of day. Anyway, uh, yeah, hash joint spills. Sorry, I, was, I, I, I got a little carried away there. I actually, got, I actually got lost in that moment in my head. I was like, because I, I can like picture the bar and the bartender. And just did something for me. Did, did something special for me. So uh, hash join memory grants, there is a lot to say about them. And thankfully, uh, I don't have to say all this. Uh, there's a link, well, my, my hand goes away where I want to point, but uh, there's a link up in the, in, that I'm going to put in the, in the show notes, as it were, uh, written by uh, Craig Friedman, who actually played the part of the bartender in that, in that scenario that we just talked about, uh, where he will, he will tell you in great, well, I, mean, I don't know, is that great detail? It's pretty good detail how memory grants for hash joins uh, are calculated by SQL Server. And um, this is in what happens when they spill. So there's all this great stuff that you will learn from Craig. Uh, I'm not going to repeat all this stuff because that would be weird plagiarism. I'm just going to tell you that it exists here. If you want to pause and read it and like, 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 like type in the URL from there, but just, just know that my, my source is cited. All right, I'm not, I'm not claiming that this green text is mine. It's definitely not. Definitely would never write all that stuff. So uh, like I promised in the video about hash aggregates, uh, we are going to use an extended event, which is over here. And that is going to show us uh, when we hit hash warnings in, uh, with, with the hash operator that spills out and starts, and starts going through different levels of recursion and then hits a bailout point. And the bailout point is uh, when the hash join switches over to some uh, naive kind of nested loops join. Uh, so that's it's not, it's not, a, not a fun time, I promise you. So what I've done is I've pre-run four queries. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what the queries are because they, they relate to what is up here. Where like the size of the data that is going through all the hashing stuff has a big part to do with how much of a memory grant the, the hash join queries need. So I've got two queries here. Uh, they both do just about the same thing. They join from votes to comments, but they join on some really low selectivity columns. All right? The post ID column in the votes table and the post ID column in the comments table are like there's only eight possible like numbers in there. So there's a lot of matches in there. These are not unique columns where there's like very few buckets of matches. Right? And some of the buckets of stuff are going to be way bigger than other buckets of stuff because there's way more of certain post types than others. That's something that we've looked at a million times in these videos. So uh, I ran these two up here without any memory grant hints on them. Right? So these ones get the full memory grant that they want to run. And then there are two down below that are, that are capped. It's essentially the same two queries in the same order, just with caps on them. Now, if you remember from the hash aggregate video, the, the, I mean, aside from the row count <laughs> and aside from the intent of the table, uh, the, the main, like, the focal point difference, the, the crucial difference between the votes table and the comments table is that the votes table has, like, five or six integer columns and a date time column. And the comments table has like four or five integer columns, 
a date time column and then an Envarkar 700 text column, string column. So the, and the string texty columns inflate memory grant needs way higher because of the way SQL Server estimates the column fullness and because it's a string and strings are a mistake and you shouldn't put strings in databases. It just screws everything up. So I've got these four queries already run and we're gonna examine the query plans just a little bit. So this first one where we select just from votes takes 7.7 .7 seconds. The one where we select from comments, right? We see the C dot star here and the V dot star here indicating the, the alias of the table we selected from, okay? Got that? And uh, the, the one that selects from comments does take a couple seconds longer. Um, you know, not real, really for any real reason other than like the ch the chunkiness of the chunkiness of the data, right? So uh, we can see that happening sort of all throughout the plan, uh, where you know the stuff takes longer, right? And um, if we look at the memory grants for these, the one that just selects the columns from the votes table gets about a four point five gig memory grant, almost four point six there. And the one that selects from the comments table gets nearly a 10 gig memory grant, right? 9,855 megabytes is about 9.85 gigabyte. Uh, yeah, almost 10 gigs. Yeah, 9.8 gigs. Yeah, close enough. There we go. Math. I can do that sometimes. Sometimes I remember things. So obviously, uh, like SQL Server's memory grants here, nothing spills from either of these. The hash joins are fine here, which means that, and, and that also another good thing to point out is that there are no warnings uh, on the selects. So sometimes if SQL Server um, is like, detects after query execution that a memory grant was either too big, way too big or way too small, uh, it'll throw up a warning on the select operator and it'll tell you that like the memory grant was too big or too small. And if you have some sort of, you know, um, memory grant feedback mechanism in place, it'll start adjusting that. If not, it'll just twiddle its thumbs and stare at you and be like, hmm, guess you should have paid for Enterprise Edition, hmm? Hmm. Oh, you're not using the newest compatibility level? Hmm. Weird. Weird for you. Yeah. Well, that's, that's too bad. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'll be over here if you need me. All these, all these features and capabilities... The, you're not in the right compat level, or you didn't pay $7,000 a core, so I'm just going to hang on over here and wait for you. Someday you'll get there. Right? Real, real helpful, real nice, real cool. Psyched on that. So uh, obviously, stifling the query that selects from the comments table is going to hurt way more from a memory grant perspective than stifling the comment, stifling the query that hits from the, the votes table because that string column in the comments table is gonna really womp things up. So if we scroll down and look at what happens to the two sort of nerf balled queries, uh, SQL Server begs for an index on this one, right? It has not begged for an index previously. And uh, if you look at the hash join operations, uh, this one spills for, uh, this query, a whole thing spills for like nearly a minute, but the one where we select from the comments table spills for nearly four, well, over four minutes. Nearly four minutes and 15 seconds. <laughs> nearly one second off. Uh, and if we look at the uh, spill levels on these, uh, this one spilled to level three, and of course all eight threads spilled, and keep this number in mind, 663800, right? So uh, that's how many pages got spilled. Now, if you were to look at uh, like the hash warning thing for these queries, the level, uh, the spill level would match the recursion level that SQL Server notes for uh, the for in the hash warning thing. Um, and then, if we look at this one, this is also oops, that, oops, that this thing keeps reframing, and that that messed me up a little bit. This one spilled to level four. And with eight, of course, was still with eight, all eight threads spilling, but that's way more pages, right? The last one was like six, six, 663,000. That's three, one, one, nine, four, eight, eight. That's a seven digit number. That's, I only have these fingers left. So that's 3.1 million pages. So that's pretty tough there, right? We spilled a lot more because that text data takes up way more space on the pages. You need way more pages to hold on to it. So this is obviously not a very good situation, but 
uh, none of these, neither of these queries, even when we nerf them down to um, 0 0.1 max grant percent hit, do we hit the hash bailout. Now, the first thing I want to show you is that hash bailout is not just for hash joins. So you may remember this query from that runs for about 30 seconds from the video about hash aggregates. We're, we're going to run this again, and we're going to watch the extended event that I have over here. And uh, about five, 10 seconds in, this will start showing stuff. And uh, we'll see it go through the different levels of recursion and then the bailout. There we go, there's recursion one. Eh, oh, this thing runs for 30 seconds. And then you have to wait for extended events to like, you know, get its act together and you know, put the stuff in there. Uh, there's two. Uh, now it finished. Hey, look at that. All right. So what happens in here? Let's, let's open this up and let's take a slightly closer look. There we go. So here are our threads. And here, well, we only, it's the top one, so there's only one. And, uh, I mean, kind of awkward, isn't it, right? Uh, <laughs> we have a bailout and then another recursion. And then uh, well, some recursions here and a bailout and then, uh, then some more bailouts. So uh, I, I, I don't know. It may, maybe it showed up out of order or maybe, maybe things are just weird. Uh, but anyway, uh, you can totally get bailout and recur re recursion and then bailout with just a hash aggregate. You don't need a hash join for it. But now let's behold the real majesty here. Oh, not that one. This one. This, this one. This one's some real good majesty. So we're going to take our, our really crappy query that it selects from the comments table, right? And we're going to run this one. And I've, I cleared out the data in here, so there's nothing in there anymore. And if we run this, uh, this thing will uh, almost immediately uh, start recursing and recursioning and, 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 and bailing and outing. Uh, it does not take much for, for this one to kick in. Uh, now, uh, I had... I'm going to come back to that one in a second. Now, I had run this same query with, the, uh, with batch mode going for it. Um, this one fared okay. Uh, you know, the, the weight stats, uh, there's one kind of new one in here. Um, so when we saw the, the hash problems uh, with um, just the hash aggregates, I believe it was ht build and ht delete that were way up top. Uh, when, with the hash join, we're starting to see a lot more HT memo, and we're starting to see this HT repartition weight. Uh, sleep task is still a big deal for, um, for both the row mode and the batch mode hash join spills. So the sleep task is still a big part of that, and it's still not in the query plan XML for either one of those. So just something that you should be aware of there. The sleep task thing is still a fact. The sleep task weight type is still a factor there. But now let's come back and look at this, and we can see that uh, this query has been bailing out for quite a while now. So uh, we hit some recursion, and then we just started bailing and bailing and bailing and bailing and bailing. This query will run for a very long time. This query will run for longer than I care to stand here. This query will run for longer than you would care to watch. Um, it, 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 would, it would be awful. <laughs> so uh, we're not going to watch this thing finish because it, it takes too long to finish. Um, there's, there's probably a good joke in there that I'm not going to make. But uh, if we look at all this data, we can see all of the bailing out happening across all of these threads over and over and over again. And uh, we have just hit, we have hit a point where we, we no longer care to live. So, uh, I don't know. That, that, those, that, that's what happens during hash joins, or hash join spills. Um, you know, the, the weight stats are the same as, uh, as they are for hash aggregate spills. And um, yeah, they're unpleasant. Uh, batch mode, still not good. Row mode, no fun at all. Uh, and again, probably way more worth uh, paying attention to uh, hash, different hash spills than different sort spills, unless the sort spills are in uh, batch mode. Um, next video, uh, we'll, that we're going we're gonna to look at exchange spills, which are when parallel uh, exchange operators uh, run out of memory buffer space and begin spilling all over the place, like 
often uh, awful drunken bar patrons who swore they just needed to use the payphone 57 beers ago. They haven't left. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, maybe someday that'll be me. If I, ever, if I ever build a time machine, go back to like 1981, that'll, that'll be my plan. Gosh, the car broke down. I've got all these bills from the, from the year 2030. No? All right. Whatever. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you invent a time machine, please take me with you. Um, what was I going to say? I uh, hope you enjoyed yourselves. I would enjoy myself if you made a time machine and took me with you. Um, that was, that was, that's really the crux of this whole thing. Um, <laughs> Uh, if you like this video, for some reason, if you like learning about how bad SQL Server can be at things, uh, feel free to give me a cordial thumb up or a cordial comment. I like those. Feel good about those. They really make my day. They brighten my whole mood. Uh, and if you enjoy this sort of SQL Server content, uh, you should hit the subscribe button because we're... we're we're getting awfully close to 4,000 here, which would, uh, I think, break, break, uh, break my uh, tie or break my current sort of standing with uh, Amiga repair channels. So we're, we're going to get up there. We're going we're gonna to break through to a new level of SQL Server fandom, you and me. All together, my, my data darlings out there in the world. So, uh, yes, you should, you should like, you should, you should subscribe, you should, you should cordial comment. And uh, you should see me in the next video where we talk about when, when parallelism gets real, real messed up. All right. Thank you for watching.